Seattle player Franklin McKenzie has been injured with an injured hamstring. His estimated return is May 30th. Get rid of Strom and give Ty Ronning a $10 million contract. Honestly, probably a pretty good deal. What's going on guys and welcome to the Stanley Cup Finals. Yes, that is right, the Stanley Cup Finals. We've been here once or twice. We're very familiar with the Stanley Cup Final. We're very familiar with Stan, good guy Stanley Cup. This is kind of like the Cleveland Cavaliers and I guess not really the uh, Golden State Warriors, but more Cleveland, more like LeBron. I guess the agency is kind of like the LeBron of the NHL. He's always, always in the Stanley Cup Final. I mean, I don't know if you would compare LeBron to a guy like Agent C, but, you know, I'm just saying, you know, comparing him a little bit. I'm not trying to disrespect LeBron or anything since he's like 6'9", 260, but I think I'd take Agent C all day, every day. Agent C is probably the best player on the planet, and I guess LeBron's the best NBA player. I don't know. I'm not an NBA fan. But regardless, we're back in the postseason up against Brandon Pierlini and the new New York Islanders. So stop the video right now, run to your kitchen, make some craft dinner, maybe get a little snack, do whatever you gotta do, keep yourself occupied, grab a beer, grab an iced tea, grab a Kool-Aid jammer if you're underage, cause this one could be a long one. Uh, cause not only do we have to get the Stanley Cup Finals done, which is gonna be a, a good chunk of this video, we also have to go into free agency, the draft, and we gotta worry about Dylan Strome. Now, speaking of Dylan Strome, now we will get into the Stanley Cup Finals, obviously, but we got a big thing to worry about here with Dylan Strome. Iron Sagan had a really good comment. He says, the reason Dylan Strome isn't producing as much is because of his offensive awareness. It is only 87 for an elite player that is terribly low. The reason he scored 90 plus points in those years playing with Agent C and Ovechkin is purely by circumstance. Ovechkin and Corey carried Strome, and now it's Keller and Corey carrying him. You can easily move Strome for a legit second liner with higher offensive awareness and save yourself some serious cap space. So maybe you guys are right about that because look at Dylan Strom's offensive awareness, 87, all right? It's not great. Like all of his other stats, even his physical category is great. Defensive awareness, it's all good. I mean, you compare that to someone who does put up a lot of points like Tolvanen, who's got the 91 offensive awareness. Even Zakhanov has 89. So I think we've all kind of agreed that Zakhanov is the future first line center. Now we got to worry about a second line center. Now I'm thinking of bringing up Ryan Paling for the second line center position. He had almost 30 goals and 56 points. That is second line center kind of numbers. I mean, you could see something like this and then we could really trade Strom either for like the first overall pick even. Uh, we could boost up our defense. I mean, we could really do a lot with Dylan Strom. Now I'd say we can wait and do it until the regular season starts starts for next year to see where Ryan Paling's at, but I don't think we have the time. You might be thinking, oh, you got lots of time. You know, you got six years left on his contract. What's the rush to move him? Well, we have to re-sign guys like Pope. We have to re-sign guys like, where is he? Jacob Chikrin, who are not going to be cheap. We got to re-sign Ronnie Doyle. We have to re-sign a lot of players. Quinton Hughes as well, I think. So we got to re-sign a lot of players. Now, I'm going to roll with our lineup right now and again we'll worry about Dylan Strome after the Stanley Cup final but but Brandon Berenfeld the assistant GM mode legend he brings up a really good point I think you should call up that Moro kid for the finals he's an 80 overall at least I saw it and Kulikov has done nothing in the playoffs give Moro some finals experience so that he can go into next season with a good idea of how the big leagues work now I was going to make a line change I was going to do that but then I realized that Tucson is actually in the finals as well against Bridgeport, which is, you guessed it, the New York Islanders farm team. So it's the Islanders and the Storm Bears in the Stanley Cup final, and then it's the Islanders affiliate team and our affiliate team in the AHL. Now, I was going to make that move. I was going to bring up Morrow, but I decided we are just going to straight up leave it the way it is because they really need Morrow. They're up 2 nothing, so I'm not going to mess with that. Although I really do, um, I really do 
do want Moro to come up. So, so maybe once they win the Calder Cup, because I'm pretty confident the boys are going to come through, maybe we'll bring him up. We'll have to think about that after. Now, one last comment from Bardownski Snipe. Excellent name. Fun fact, the 2019 NHL Draft, we currently have four of the top six players. Agent C, the Brazilian Butterfly, Zakhanov, and Keatley. The top pick was also a big bum. Now, obviously talking about uh, Felix Pox, that stinky guy over there in Detroit. But imagine if Detroit took Agent C. I can't believe they slept on this guy. Unreal. Now, I didn't even realize that Keatley was taken in the same draft as well, 2019. So that's hilarious. We have Agent C, we got Keatley, we have the Brazilian Butterfly, and Zakhanov. That's awesome. So the 2019 draft was good to us. All right, let's get this thing underway, head into the Stanley Cup Finals. We're very familiar with the New York Islanders. Now, they got Brandon Pierlini on the first line. Unreal. There you go. Atta boy. He is a legend. 57 points this year, 67 last year, having a pretty good postseason, almost a point per game. Damn. Atta boy, Pierlini. Now, we're looking for a second-line scoring winger, and we traded Brandon Pierlini. Uh, Matthew Barzell, Joshua Ho saying Joe Valeno, uh, John Tavares, Kiefer Bellows. So their top six is nice. Uh, they got Kudobin, they got Sloan and Adam Irney, and then their fourth line doesn't look like it's that great, but Anders Lee, uh, there he is, 35 years old, listed as an AHLer. Now have a look at their defense, which they also have a former Seattle Storm Bear, and that is Kyle Subban. Now we drafted him in 2019, so that was another player that we eventually could have kept, but uh, we traded him. He was in the 2019 draft as well. Uh, but there he is, 15th overall. I'm pretty sure that Kyle Subban was one of the bigger pieces that ended up uh, becoming Zakhanov, that big move we did with the Islanders. Because they had, obviously, Tavares. They had Joe Valeno. They had all these young guys, including Matt Barzell. So they really didn't need a guy like Zakhanov. And we uh, we pulled the trigger, and it's worked out pretty nice for us. Nick Letty and Jonas Brodeen. And in the cage, in the cage they have Ilya Skorkin, I think is how you pronounce his name and Vesa Barkov. So Vesa Barkov is a drafted player, and this guy is undrafted. So there you go. Uh, he's a Russian goalie, and I think we have the advantage basically throughout the entire lineup. Do they have any injuries? Uh, I don't think so. It doesn't look like they had any injuries either. So I don't know. This could be a pretty tight series. They didn't have that great of a record. They had a lot of overtime losses, so that's kind of what pushed them into the postseason. 46 wins is not that bad either, but let's go here. Game Game number one against Brandon Pierlini and the New York Islanders. Now, this is Zakhanov's old team as well. We've played the Islanders, I think, once in the playoffs. I think so. I can't remember. We've been in so many playoffs, made so many trades. I just can't remember. Period number one. Let's get this thing underway. We've only lost three times in the entire postseason. So I'm looking to continue that momentum here into game number one. And it's 2 nothing right off the bat. The in and in. There you go. And Agent C. Agent C scored two minutes into the game. There you go. And then the in and in scores with three minutes left. Period number two. Oh my god. 4 1. Agent C gets another. And then Dylan Strom gets one. Matthew Barzell scores on Big Mac to break the shutout. Okay. Sloan gets one, making it 4 2. Come on, guys. Let's get another one here. Agent C for the hat trick. Oh my god. John Tavares on the power play. Okay. Come on, guys. They're really putting the pressure on. They've matched us in shots, but Quinton Hughes, there you go, atta boy, gets a big goal, making it 5-3. to three. This one is all but over. There's no way Big Mac's allowing another goal. 5-3. to three. Quinton Hughes put the nail in the coffin there. Clayton Keller with four helpers. What a beast. All right, it's a pretty good first game. Hopefully no injuries happen. My biggest fear is like losing agency or like just basically losing any one of our key players. Seeing how much we depend on agency and Big Mac and Quinton Hughes, losing any one of those guys would literally be the worst thing ever. Okay, let's go here. Game number two, basically do what you did in game one. Play in front of your home fans. The Starbucks Center is popping off today. Free coffees for everyone. First period, ooh, down by three. They had a lot of momentum there in the second period of the last game, and uh, they come out firing three goals on 13 shots. Come on, guys, play for your goalie here. 
period number two. Okay, we get one. Zakhanov on his old team. Shots are pretty even. If we can get one right away, we can make it interesting. But Joe Valeno pretty much puts this one away. Okay, New York. All right. I think they're a team that they score in bunches. They scored a bunch in the first period, scored a bunch in the second period of the last game, and they're going to embarrass us here. Oh, my God. Yeah, so basically you got to get on these guys early, I think, is the big thing. I don't think we're going to see a shutout. I don't think we're going to see a shutout. I don't think we're going to see any of that. I think it's just going to be either a team's going to explode for five goals or it's going to be a one-goal game. So 1-1 one, one is the series going back to Long Island, a place where I don't want to be. For sure, we're going back to Seattle. So let's win these next two. We need to get on these guys early. I want to see two in the first period. Let's go. Period number one. There you go. Exactly what I wanted. And oh my God, right. Ryan Paling from center ice because of course he did. That's before center ice actually. Just a rocket uh, he scores there. Uh, but two goals in the first period. That is my future second liner right there. Period number two. Okay, they get one. Joshua Hosang scores with 38 seconds left. Come on, guys. Get one right away. I do not want these guys to climb back into this. Shots are even. Oh, man, this one can go any way. Come on, I need an insurance marker. Oh, the 35-year-old Anders Lee, but Yakola, third liner, Yakola, what a name. He gets a goal with eight minutes left, and is that gonna be the game winner with three seconds left? Absolutely it is. We win in Long Island on a crazy game-winning goal. Oh my God, no, no, this is my worst. I jinxed myself. No! Seattle player Franklin McKenzie has been injured with an injured hamstring. His estimated return is May 30th. Oh no! May 30th? That's... He's basically done for the entire series. We only need to win two more games. Aaron Dell, I need you here so badly. Oh no, okay, did our HL team win already? Okay, they have one more game. So you could see us make a line change with Moro, but we lost, oh my God, Big Mac. No way we just lost out on Big Mac. Aaron Dell, oh my God. And we had to take our AHL goalie who's one win away from the Calder Cup. He's nine and one. Okay, I gotta send that guy down. There's no way that our AHL team should be without their starting goalie. He's nine and one with four shutouts. An agency's up to a 98 overall, what a beast. Okay, so hold on, hold on. What I gotta do here is I gotta go to goalies. I gotta send that guy down. Actually, I gotta call up this backer. I'll call up this guy. Dumont, all right, 68 overall. You're getting the, you're getting the time. You're getting the time in the big show. Okay, we'll send that guy down. He deserves to win the, uh, he deserves to win the Calder Cup. He's nine and one, all right. He's gotta, he's gotta finish the job there in Tucson. But Aaron Dell. Oh my god, this just got dramatic. Now, Zakhanov is actually up to a 91, so he's uh, jumped up from a 90 to a 91. Okay, he's ready for the first line, baby. Uh, and there you go. Dumas and Aaron Dell, and then in the AHL, I gotta put that guy in there. Who's 9 and 1? Who is this guy? 23 years old, medium starter. What a beast. What a monster. 1.67 goals against. Holy crap. Okay, there you go. And then this guy apparently is the backup, Thomas Backer. That's actually Actually great he's the backup and his name is backer I love that uh, there you go Thomas backer but Aaron Dell the 37 year old backup goalie Seattle Storm Bears legend backup goalie I mean he's played great for us 15 and 3 13 and 4 7 and 1 6 and 3 13 and 5 he had four shutouts this year which is awesome he's been really good for us but he's been a backup and that's it all right, he's been a backup with very, very minimal playoff experience. So I'm nervous. We just lost out on Big Mac after I just, I jinxed myself. It's the classic X-Tex jinx. It's, oh man, I can't believe that. Okay, so you only need to win two more games. Agency, I need you to go balls to the wall here. I need you to put up four a night, all right? I need you to score some freaking goals because Aaron Dell, I'm not saying he's a bad goalie, but oh my God, the first shot, Brandon Pierlini. No. 
Oh my god, okay. Alright, not a great start for Arendelle. Not a great start at all. Not good. Not great at all. Brandon Pierlini knows Arendelle really well, and uh, he had to snipe one on him. Okay, let's go here, guys. You got Arendelle. He's very capable of doing the job. Let's go. Let's just keep this one at bay. Let's keep this one an even hockey game. Let me get one in the first. Let's not ask for too much. Period number one. Okay, Joshua Hosang makes it 2 nothing. Going into the second period, we gotta go times eight here. We're we're being outshot. We're being outscored. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, no, no. Four goals on twenty shots. God. Okay, let's let's just end this period here. Four to nothing. This is the worst. This is the worst thing ever. This is oh my god. Five nothing. They're gonna tie up the series here. They just straight up played better than us. 32, oh my god, 6 nothing. let's just end it, let's end it, okay, we got one, Clayton Keller, but 6 to 1, oh no, Big Mac, Big Mac, come back, uh, oh my god, he's back, he's back already, he came back early, oh my god, Big Mac, he misses one game, what an animal, okay, get back in there, <laughs> get in the cage, Oh my god, he saw Aaron Dell struggling, straight up struggling. He's like, boys, I'm injured. What was it, like an injured hamstring or something? He is a monster, and he's best friends with the in and in uh, But Big Mac, he is an animal, coming in clutch. He's injured, he's battered, he's bruised. Zakhanov's on the first line, I don't even care. The series is tied up at two. Big Mac is back in the cage, and it looks like our HL team is going to game seven. Oh man. All right, let's go here. Game number four. The series is tied at two apiece in the Stanley Cup final. This is a crucial game in front of your home fans. Let's go, guys. Period number one. Okay, we're down by one. Joshua Hosang. Second period. Let's get one on the board. Oh, no. We're down by two. Sorry, we're, we're down by three. We allowed two. Sloan and Josh Hosang. Man, Agent C has been real quiet. He's been really quiet lately. 28-19 are the shots. We're out shooting him. It's not for a lack of trying. Almost 30 shots on the guy. Whew, okay, let's take a big breath here. Let's get one. Come on. Let's just get one. Let's get one. I do not want to be shut out here. Okay, something's got to happen. Something, something's got to give because we are uh, we're struggling, and I don't really know why. I mean, obviously losing Big Mac did not help at all, but he's back, and we have our back up against the wall. We get one Yakola scores, but uh, yeah, too little, too late. We're going into game six with our backs up against the wall, and Ryan Paling has been injured. What? What is that? Is that right? Or did he like stub his toe or something? Is he just is he, is he still playing? How'd our HL team do? Uh, oh man, they lost. Oh, that sucks. Okay, let me make up a line change here. Let's bring out. Uh, let's just let's see what we can do here. All right, so here's what I came up with. We got Keller, Strom, Agency, Tolvanen, Zakhanov, and Ty Ronning. Yep, that's right. Big Ty. There he is. Getting on the second line, top six minutes. We got the Inanen, Ryan Paling, and Yakola. So we got the Finns going with Ryan Paling there. Uh, and then I brought up Moro, okay? Chad Moro. Now, he lost in the Calder Cup final, which sucks. He had 16 points in 22 games. He's going to go alongside Kachuk and Pope. Defensively, I haven't touched maybe I should uh, should I just go like oh god I don't even know what can we do let's do something like this sure I don't know let's just try something let's try whatever we can do right now Big Mac looks like he's recovered from the injury that's good news let's go here game number six it's do or die all right do or die here we go, up against Brandon Pierlini, who could get his third Stanley Cup ring here. Does he have two or three? I think he's got two with us, so looking for his third here. But I think Agency and Tyroning have something to say about that. Let's go times eight. Let's let the simulation do its thing. I'm hoping for like a big overtime game here. Eight shots to nothing. They haven't even got a shot yet. Okay, 10 to two, 12 to two, 13 to two. We're all over these guys. 
A 14-2, 15-4, come on, come on, get one, get one. Look at that first period, 17-4 are the shots. We're all over these guys. Come on, come on, 1-800-AGENCY, just dial the phone number. Get your flip phone out, get your Motorola Razor flip phone and start calling that number, just spam it, 1-800-AGENCY. Oh God, we need a goal and Tolvanen comes through clutch. Tolvanen, there you go. Way better than Brady Kachuk. Who the hell is that guy? Pitlick, who are you and why do you score goals? And Pierlini, no. Oh my God, Matthew Barzell. Dylan Strom comes right back. What a wild couple of minutes here. And then Tolvanen again. Oh my God, game six of the finals. It's a wild one. It is a wild one. 33-25 are the shots. Four goals in the third period. And I said I wanted an overtime game. And it looks like we're getting that. Headed into overtime, it's do or die. Here we go. Oh man, we're in enemy territory. The Stanley Cup is in the building. I'm looking to end this real quick. Agency, look at the speed. Come on, throws it back to Quinton Hughes. Quinton Hughes pitches in over to Keller. Back to OEL. OEL gets bumped, has the puck. Gives it away. Oh my god, what's going on? A little bit of live commentary for you guys. I can't even see the players because the stupid fans won't sit down. Oh my god, what a save! What a freaking stop! Robs Matthew Barzell point blank. Here comes Dylan Strom on the half wall, shoots, he scores! Dylan Strom! Oh my god, we have life! Dylan Strom, why do you have to do that? Why? Why? Do anyone but Dylan Strom. Honestly, I'm happy we won, but of course Dylan Strom gets the winner. Oh man, I thought he was going to pass there to Agent C, but he's like, no, 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 I got this. Whew, there you go. We have life, ladies and gentlemen. We have life. Game number seven. Let's go. We're in front of our home fans, Seattle, Washington. The Starbucks Center is alive right now. You can't even buy tickets for this game. It is sold out. The tickets are insanely expensive. Times eight sim. Boys, let's go. Let's get our fourth Stanley Cup. Let's do it. All right, so there you go, Quinton Hughes. There you go, what a guy. And Oliver ekman Larson, couple of really good defensemen. My two favorite defensemen next to Ronnie Doyle. Uh, there you go, we come with a 2-0 lead in the first period. 11-10 are the shots, a little bit closer than the last first period. 2-0 right out the gate. Oh man, that's beautiful. And then Agency. Oh man, they pulled their goalie after two? Oh man, what are you doing? Pulling your starting goalie after allowing only two goals? Wow, where's the trust in your starter? Quinton Hughes, what a game seven. Your big name players have to come through and they're doing just that. OEL, Quinton Hughes, Agent C. Who is that guy? Gogol? That's a that's the stupidest name ever. Ten minutes left. We're up by three. Oh man, looking to go up by four here. There you go, Agent C with his second of the night. Four Stanley Cup rings. Oh my god. There it is, Lord Stanley in the Starbucks Center where it rightfully belongs. Wait, they're putting their starter in? What? We didn't even score on them. They pulled their starter after two goals and with 30 seconds left, like, yeah, just go back in the net. What? What are you doing? Two, one. The Seattle Storm Bears are Stanley Cup champions once again. There you go. Oh my God. Again, four Stanley Cups. What a ride it has been. I'm sorry, Brandon Pierlini. You're not getting another ring, not this time. There you go. Ronnie Doyle, oh man, agency. OEL with another ring. No question he is going to be in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Four Stanley Cups to his name. Oh man, he's been so good for us. Big Mac with his fourth. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We ended up calling up that Moro guy. He actually got a taste of what it's like to win. He lost in the Calder Cup, but he wins when it matters most. There you go. The handshake. And then who's going to win the Conn Smythe? I'm going to say it's hard to bet against agency. It really is. I think Big Max won it once. There it is. There's another Conn Smythe for agency. 15 goals, 10 helpers. 
There you go. That's a nice trophy, but it's not the one we want. Look at those pads. Oh, man. Here you go, OEL, for the fourth time in five years. Is that right? Fourth time in five years. Yeah, because we lost against Ottawa. There you go. Get that Stanley Cup. Hoist it over your head. Oh, man. This pitcher never gets old. Never, ever, ever. Who gets it number two? Number 16? Who is that? I have no idea who that guy is. Uh, is that Ryan Paling? Uh, <laughs> Ronnie Doyle, the tough guy. Look at the beard, too. That's awesome. Give it to the tough guy. That's the best thing ever. And then, who's that? Uh, Ryan Paling. There you go. Gets his first Stanley Cup. That was a uh, hell of a first year he had with our team. 29 goals, 56 points. He's going for a lap. There you go. Stanley Cup champions once again. 5-1 Game 7 victory. The road to our fourth cup was kind of a weird one. The first two series were pretty easy. The Colorado Avalanche gave us a little bit of a scare, and then that was a hard-fought battle in seven games against the Islanders to capture our fourth Stanley Cup. And unfortunately, our AHL team ended up losing. Even though we were up 2-0, they lost in seven games to the Bridgeport Islanders. What are they called? The Bridgeport something the sound tigers right not the islanders uh so they won the calder cup lost the stanley cup the stanley cup is the one you want to win not the calder cup that's a big victory let's enjoy the stanley cup as much as we can but a big piece of our team is about to be gone and he did score a big goal in game six and we have the seventh overall pick thank you los angeles and we also have the 13th from new jersey so we trade we traded that goalie for the first, which is going to be a 13th overall pick, and we traded basically scraps for the seventh. So yeah, we're looking good. Lots of picks, Stanley Cups. We are doing just fine. So I'll talk about Strom in a minute here. Did Alex Ovechkin retire? Did he call it quits? And no, he's staying for another year. Was he going to be 42? That's insane. Uh, Seattle Storm Bears legend, Anze Kopitar. Uh, Voracek, Josh Bailey. Anyone else I can see that we used to have maybe? Um... No one really. Tom Kuhn Hackle, he's gone. Uh, Kyle Clifford, we once had him for, I think, one playoff game. Uh, Eric Branson, there you go. What a guy. And that's basically everyone. So there's that. Uh, any tendies who called it quits? Maybe Luongo, is he gone yet? I don't know. Uh, Jonathan Bernier, Ben Bishop calls it quits. Jonathan Bernier, 420 wins. He was really, really good for Colorado for like a stretch of like basically from here to like basically here, basically till the end of his career. He found a really good home there in Colorado. He had 420 wins. Corey Crawford, 413. He's got more wins than Ben Bishop. That's wild. Uh, Cam Talbot. There you go. Uh, Thomas McCollum had one game and one win. That's all it was. Now, usually I'd have some sort of an idea on what we're going to do, but honestly, I have no clue. That's not the greatest thing, especially with having your, I guess, franchise centerman being on the out. Uh, in the postseason, he ended up having, what? He ended up having 11 points in 22 games. So, yeah, still good, but not first-line center good. And I think that's kind of everyone needs... I think everyone knows Dylan Strome needs a change of scenery. Probably get the Dylan Strome trade done. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so Stanley Cup goes to Seattle, obviously. Presidents goes to Seattle. And, and the Seattle Storm Bears Bowl Trophy. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. The Clarence S. Campbell uh, should be called the Seattle Storm Bears Campbell Bowl. Uh, there you go. Once again. And Prince of Wales. We beat out Tampa twice. Beat out Ottawa once. And then beat out the Islanders. Uh, Art Ross goes to Agent. C. Hart goes to Agency. James Norris goes to Solani. Uh, Lady Bing goes to Panarin. Calder goes to Backman. Ron Smythe goes to Agency. The Vesna doesn't go to Big Mac. Goes to Carter Hart. Okay. Uh, William M. Jennings goes to Big Mac because, of course, it does. Bill Masterton goes to that Hoyle guy. Tyler Sagan wins the Frank J. Selkie. Agent C wins his fourth, I think. That's his fourth Ted Lindsay. And the Rocket goes to Agent C for the fifth time in his NHL career. 
Now, they gave the Vezina to Carter Hart, who was the third best goalie for wins, and it wasn't even like it was close. It was like Carter Hart, you know, 22 losses, eight shutouts. Yeah, it's great. But the next one had 47 and 13, and then Ackerman was 48 and 11. If anything, Ackerman should have won it. What is with them and giving the not the best goalie the Vesna? I don't know what. I mean, maybe he carried Philadelphia. I don't know. Let's go. NHL entry draft. Now we got to make a decision, okay? Do we trade for the first overall pick? I don't know. Maybe we have lots of trade value. I mean, why not? Um, so there's two centers available. Looks like those guys are top five. I mean, if I was to trade for the first overall pick, I'd want to get a center. Um, Matt Scrivens or or uh, Reginald Carney. Reginald is his name. Wow. Reginald Carney. We've got Leonard McCarthy. Uh, we've got Ken Nicholson. And who's this guy? Cam Brodziak, who's high elite 17 years old. So his overall could be pretty low. But he does look like a pretty sick sniper. Look at his, uh, look at his shooting category. 99 wrist shot but again it is red and we haven't scouted him a ton so do we trade for the first overall pick now this is i i mean i've tried to have some sort of thought into this i'm really struggling to find a suitable place for dylan strome now we can talk about it all we want he's on the out all right he's got four rings he's going to be a valuable piece to any team now if we trade a franchise center i'd like to get one in return so i think that's why trading for the first overall pick is the smartest move and selecting one of those two centermen um now that's not to say we could do this in the off season but i need the cap space asap um, now, I'm going to like to see what else I could get because they do need a first line center. It looks like they have this 59 overall guy. They have Ryan Johansson and Popovich. Now, it's going to be a long time before this 58. It's going to be a long time before this 59 overall guy becomes anything. And then Ryan Johansson is not the first line center he once was. So they really need a first line center. And they got Ovi. Uh, so they get to be reunited, that magical lineup. So it does really make sense for us to trade Strom for the first. It really does. Uh, they don't want to give up the first, though. That's the problem. Now, I don't even know if it'll go through if we were to go something like like this. You know, I mean, or if we get a prospect instead. Let's see. I'd rather get a prospect. But, I mean, we could also get picks as well. So like, if we were to get someone like this Williams guy who's 66, 21 years old, uh, Billy Williams. Williams, just a good defensive boy, just a good American kid, Billy Williams. <laughs> okay, Billy Williams, there you go. If we could get Billy Williams and the first, that's just like a funny name to say, Billy Williams. Uh, Billy Williams and a first for Dylan Strome. I think that is fair. I know the first has a ton of value, and with a pretty good uh, defensive prospect there, they win, we win. I think that's a win. So. Honestly, uh, it's such a hard decision, man. It's so tough. Like, look at Ryan Paling. He's already up to an 86. He's ready to be a second-line center. Zakhanov is very, very, very ready to be a first-line center. Like, he's proved it year in, year out. So... Let's pull the trigger. Let's get a first overall pick. I want one of those two centermen. Um, I mean, either one. I think they're gonna. I think the top five are all like 80s. I think anyone in the top five is good, but I like the first overall pick. I will select one of those centermen. Uh, I hope they're one of the best. I mean, see, now I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking, you know, what if we trade for this pick, and I pick, what's his name, Scrivens? Is that the guy who I was looking after? Scrivens or Reginald, all right? I pick one of those guys, and then they're actually scouted to go, like, here and here, right? So then I really overpaid. Oh, da, 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 da. I can always just trade him for the player afterwards. Maybe that's what we'll do. Okay, let's see here. Let's, because we can make a draft day trade, okay? Let's see who the top three picks are, and then we'll go and trade for one of those players. Maybe, if they're like 80 ish overall. Okay, let's see here. Who is Nashville going to select first overall? And it's Brodziak, 82 overall. Okay, okay, that's good. That guy's 17, 82 overall. Oh my god, we should go after him. Holy crap. 1782 overall. Wow. Could you imagine him in agency? Okay, well, okay. Well, they drafted that guy. 
All right, hold on here. We have the seventh. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. We have four first-round picks this year, by the way. Four. Four first-round picks. So let's actually see what his trade value is. That guy, ooh, he could be something special. Okay, look at his trade value. It's really high. He's 17 years old. Look at the offensive awareness. 88. I wish he was a center so badly. Oh, man. Like, if I could pull the trigger for that, that would be awesome. I think we could actually get a bit as well. So we trade uh, Brodziak for Dylan Strom. Okay, and I think we can get a little bit more, to be honest with you. They seem to want Dylan Strom as well, which is really good. Um, I just wanted to see who that pick was. You know, actually, wait. We're going to see who the second overall pick is. We're going to see who gets pick number two. And that's to San Jose. Is it one of those centers? So, yeah, it is Scrivens, 82 overall. Who's going three? Carney. So, yeah, those are definitely the best three players in the draft. Unless there's, like, a franchise goalie or something. Ryan Murray, a second and a second for Dylan Strome. Nope. We're going to get a lot more than that. Okay, so the top three players, they're all done. I really want Brodziak. But I also really like Scrivens. Uh, Scrivens is 18, so I mean he's he's got 88 offensive awareness as well. Scrivens or Brodziak? Who do we go after? Brodziak looks more fun. I think he's going to put up more points. But for a centerman, 88 passing—that's kind of what we need in Scrivens. He's got 85 passing. Brodziak's sick, but I think going after Scrivens is probably the right decision to make. I don't know. Let's see here. Let's sim up to the seventh overall pick, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what we can uh, see what we can do here. So, what do we need? We need a center, obviously. Uh, that's no surprise. A center would be nice. Um, looks like there's one center available here. And that is Gordon Boyce. He is a sniper. Okay, he is a 18-year-old high top six sniper. Or we can go with Hoffman. We have a pretty decent stack of uh, defensive prospects. So I think we're going to go with Boyce. Gordon Boyce. And we have a lot of big power forwards. Let's go with the sniper here. Let's go with Boyce. Let's see what he is. Medium top six, 64 overall. Okay, what did we miss out on? Archibald's a medium top six, 66 overall. Uh, Hoffman, 65. So either one of those guys, uh, that guy's only 65. Yeah, either one of those guys, we made the right pick, I think. And we have pick number 13 as well. So let's go here. Let's pick another player. Do we go with a goalie? Let's go with a Tendi, maybe, uh, who's a first rounder. Now, we haven't... Um, haven't really needed to draft a goalie because we've been pretty rich with goaltending prospects, and we still have some, actually. Um, what do we go for here? Looking to pick a winger here. So we have Osgood, Phil Osgood, 5'9", 177, or we got Simpson, who this guy's only 17, uh, Osgood's 18. Let's go with Osgood here with the 13th overall pick, I think. 61, medium top six. Now I know there's gonna be some sort of like a medium elite guy right after our pick, of course. All right, let's see who we missed out on. Let's see if there's anyone. So that, the goalie's a medium starter, that's not bad. Uh, another goalie there. So I mean, uh, I mean, with what was out there, I think we made a pretty good pick. And now we have another first round pick, our third. We haven't really hit on anyone yet. I'm looking to get like a medium elite. That would be awesome. Uh, Dupre, let's go with him. Another centerman, let's go with Dupre. What's he looking like? 76 medium elite. <laughs> There you go. Okay, I think I said 76. 67. I said I wanted a, a medium elite. Boom, we got him. There you go. 67. Dupre. There you go. Um, Anderson for Ronnie Doyle. Yeah, we don't need another bottom six grinder. No thank you. We picked a couple of forwards. Let's go ahead and pick a defenseman here. So we got the Finn, uh, who that is a crazy name. And then we have uh, Evan Calder, who's a defensive defenseman. Don't need any more defensive defensemen. Let's go with, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. He's 20 years old, so he could be pretty decent in the overall department. Let's see here. Let's see what he's looking like. He is 65, medium top four. Eh, it's not terrible. Now, we didn't have a second round 
round pick, so we're all the way in the third round here, but I saw the Bruins got a 72 overall medium elite in the uh, the second round there, so that's pretty good. Now we have a pick all the way back here. Let's see if we can get a goalie. We've hit on every single position. Let's see if there's a Tendi available. Doesn't look like it. Now OEL's on the way out. Let's get another Swedish defenseman, Thomas Dackel. There you go. What's he looking like? He is... Did I see a 70? Did I see a 70 overall? I thought I saw a 7. Oh no, 66 medium top 4 is still pretty damn good. We scouted this guy a lot. I feel like loading up on defensemen. Uh, Latipov? Latipov? Uh, Sergei Latipov. 6'3", 206. A lot of his stuff is green, and we scouted him four times. Defensive defenseman. Let's go ahead and give him, oh my god, 76 overall medium top six in the fourth round? That guy's almost NHL ready. Whew. Wow, okay, he's 20 years old, so you guys remember, like, we've picked a few of the 20-year-olds, and they have all seemed to pay off. 76! Uh, I've also been getting a lot of offers of Ryan Murray, which I'm not super interested in, and this guy we've been getting quite a few offers, Kavanaugh. What's he looking like? I'm obviously not interested in trading Tolvan in, but so this video is getting pretty long here. We're getting a lot of worthless trade offers. I'm going to go ahead and skip over the draft. If there's anything crazy that happens, I will uh, stop and show you guys, but uh, let's see if we can hit on some more picks and then I'll see you guys in the resign stage where I'm probably going to end the video because I don't know what I'm going to do with Dylan Strom and I seriously need your guys' help here. Ty Ronning, get out of here, Vancouver. Of course you would want Ty Ronning. So through all that, we have one more pick. Oh my god, 75 in the seventh round. Who is this guy? He's only 19. Wow, unreal. So I'm just going to check here, see if there's any more steals. That's one of the better steals that I've actually seen. Uh, low elite grinder. Let me have a look here. But 75 in the seventh round, that's insane. 74. Wow. Wow. There is some late round steals here. We're gonna go with another 20 year old Russian. We drafted him four times. That worked out last time and he is 62 overall low top six. Not terrible. I think the best pick in this draft came at 102 with a 76 overall guy in like the fifth round or whatever that is. That's crazy. So I'm going to cut the video here. Now I said we're going to get the resign stage and the Dylan Strom trade done, but I'm just so unsure of what to do. Now especially because we have that new kind of a new kind of wrench in here now with potentially trading for Scrivens who is that uh, probably going to slot in as a third line center for next year. Uh, we get 9 million dollars off the books, which I absolutely 100% have to do. There's no question about it. I have to offload that contract because we have to re-sign guys like, where is it? Who do I got to re-sign? All expiring. I got to re-sign the in and in. I got to re-sign Pope. I got to re-sign Ryan Paling, Jacob Chikrin, and I forgot Zakhanov as well. So I have to get that $9 million contract off the books. No question. Absolutely have to do it. Uh, so there's that. And we're going to have a look at, uh, where is it? It was San Jose, I believe. They have the San Centerman, where is he? Uh, let's have a look. I think his name was Scrivens. He's the guy I really want. Uh, apparently, he doesn't exist. There he is. Okay, 82 overall, medium elite. He is NHL ready, 100%. He would be our third liner, then eventually become our second liner, and eventually become our new first line center to center agency. Does San Jose even have any good centers right now? They got to Brinkat, and then Buchstad, and Nora. So they're pretty deep, actually. Honestly, I don't know. You guys can let me know what to do here. There's a few options. We trade him for either the stud from Nashville or we trade him for the stud for from uh, San Jose. Or we trade him for an established second liner, but I'm kind of trending not towards that because we got Ryan Paling. Or we trade him for prospects and picks and don't get another roster player. I don't know. Trading a franchise first line center is not what I'm good at. Please help me here. In the next video is going to be a big one as well. Let's not distract ourselves from the fact that we Let's not distract ourselves from the fact that we've won our fourth Stanley Cup here in Seattle. Thank you for watching. The next episode is going to be a little bit crazy. I don't know what to do. It's tearing me apart. Let me know, guys, and I will see you in the next one.